there's this idea that it was just like, I don't know, women were just kind of hanging around, not doing much, and men are just out there doing everything. And I just don't think it's a true narrative. Um, and I, I think it betrays. I think it betrays the contributions of women, in fact, because they were not doing the exact same work as men. Um, it's viewed as if, oh, okay, only the type of labor and the type of things that men are doing, like we're only going to put a value on that and we're going to try to shove millions, billions of women in that same direction by those same comparison points. Whereas I don't think that's, that doesn't, that's not the reality of the complementary nature that we've had for however many thousands of years of our existence. You and I agree violently. Okay. <laughs> I, will, I will add a confounding variable. Okay. So I don't think there is any greater contribution any human being can make to humanity other than have a child and raise it well. Yes. Now, I say that as somebody who doesn't have children, but I'm not delusional. I get that that should be the default life path for most people. Mm -hmm. If you are unsure what you should do with your life, I highly encourage you to seriously contemplate having children and raising them well, male or female. Yeah. Just, I've got a whole thing about why I think that's a, almost certainly the wisest path for the largest number of people. Mm -hmm. Always exceptions. Anyway, I hope people consider it. Uh, the confounding variable for women is that I think what is true for men because we don't have to take on the huge birth, nine months of being pregnant. It's a lot. So nine months, then you also are the breastfeed. only one that can lactate. So you're gonna breastfeed. And then by the way, nature had to optimize you for like being way into that shit. So not only are you into it by temperament, meaning you're more into people, you're more in tune with their emotions, you are more emotionally available yourself, the world just kind of narrowed because again, nature doesn't give a shit about anything other than do you have kids that live long enough to have kids? And so we've just been incentivized in, in not incentivized is the wrong one. We, we have been shaped mm. through incentives to be different ways. Yes, And so, I like to word it this way, though. I have no idea how your audience will react. But women, women have, as the sexual gatekeepers, have bred men to be the way that they are. So cool. We're more interested in things. Yes. So now you've got nature hamstringing women. You're, you have your period. It, that's not easy to deal with when you're going through it. Uh, you could be pregnant and have to deal with the children. Uh, you could have kids and have to be dealing with that. Um, hunting, especially if we're talking like a, a pretty big predatory animal is going to require the kind of explosive speed and strength mm -hmm. and direction orientation that men have. Okay. Now millions of years of evolution like that, then you introduce the modern era Yeah. and the confounding variable is, uh, what happens when women get access to birth control? Now all of a sudden they're like, oh, I can opt out of having kids or even having to worry about it for quite some period of time. So now I have more options available to me. Also, you're not fighting for every bit of calorie that you get. So all of a sudden you have time to read and get educated and suddenly you realize, oh my God, I'm into marine biology and I can put off having kids for like 10 or 15 years. So I wanna go pursue marine biology. But that started happening and women were like, hang on, I'm not being invited into the workforce. I'm not being respected that this is the choice that I want to make. And so there was a lot of early friction and sure. that created a societal narrative, however untrue, mm. because now I don't think that narrative makes any fucking sense. Women are doing way better than men on a lot of different metrics. For sure. So, but the narrative is still going, right? For we sure. are both the shout and the echo. So this echo is just coming back like crazy. And so again, the reason they put the narrative in is they may have grown up at a time where their mom wanted to work and couldn't, or their mom like couldn't get the kind of job that she wanted because she never got that education because her parents told her, like literally my wife who is in her mid forties, she was told, she's only in her mid forties, mm -hmm. okay? She was born in 79 and she was told in the nineties, you can study whatever you want in college because you're just gonna end up being a mother anyway. Meaning whatever you study doesn't matter, it's a throwaway. You're gonna be a mother. Now mm -hmm. he meant it with reverence 
you'll do the greatest thing that any human being could ever do, which is have children. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 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 of course, go study whatever you want. Underwater basket weaving, doesn't matter. <laughs> because the thing that really matters, the, the tremendously beautiful contribution that you will make to your family, to this world, is to have a child. He was not flipping about it. But he literally didn't care what she studied. Sure. Okay? That, that's in the 90s. So there are a lot of people that are like, hey, I very much feel alienated from that world where I want to climb the corporate ladder. I look at, I forget the CEO of Pepsi's name, but like, I want to climb the ladder like that. And so now you get storytellers going, uh, cool, I'm going to show all the stories of women being the baddest mm -hmm. of the badasses, the smartest, better than men, so that it just, people have that representation of like, yo, you can be this dope. And I get that. So... Uh, this is weird for anybody not watching. I happen to be a white guy, though. I think it is by far the least interesting thing about me. <laughs> but I wrote a comic book where one of the lead characters is a black woman. And I had this woman bring her young black daughter up to me at a comic convention. And the mom burst into tears and was like, I had to thank you uh, because my daughter pointed at her on the comic book and said she looks like me. Mm -hmm. And we don't see enough of that in comics. And dude, as a white guy, already knowing the culture war shit, I was still like, fuck, that hits me in the heart. Like I was so stoked that that was the reaction. So like, I'll just accept yeah. that everybody's got great intentions, but what they have forgotten is you have to tell a good story first. Mm -hmm. And I forget who said it, but like, oh uh, God, um, he's one of your countrymen. Uh, countrymen. He was almost- As in England? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He was almost um, 007. Oh, God, he's like the suavest dude on planet Earth. Black guy? Yes. Idris Elba. Idris Elba, okay. thank you. Okay, uh, so he said, uh, I'm not a black actor. I'm just an actor. Yeah. Right? So they have to just be characters. They yes. can't be female characters. Yep. Strong, it's independently, like, yeah. strong, independent female. Like It's, just, yep. it's a character. They're going to be flawed, and they're going to have foibles. In fact, this is why J.K. Rowling is the greatest living author as far as I can tell. Okay. If somebody can point to somebody better, I'm here for it. But oh my God, you need only read in book five of the Harry Potter series, the, the sequence around Harry's first kiss covers everything about coming to age. It, it is the most jaw-droppingly well-written sequence I've ever read. It is unbelievable. It mm. makes me feel so badly about myself because I cannot write that good. It, it is <laughs> unbelievable but it's all about the flaws. It's all about the things we don't see. That's when we recognize ourselves, that Harry is like completely confused about why Cho is crying during their first kiss, but uh, Harmony understands it and can explain it to him and you realize that's her strength and, oh God. So anyway, when you make these complex characters that are not purely heroic, they're not purely villainous, it's, it's unbelievably true mm. and when we see that kind of depth and truth then you've really got something so anyway these are well-intentioned people that are right that people love to see things that look like themselves that make them feel like they can dream about that but at the same time if it's not a dope character who's completely flawed and that like i should see myself in the portrayal of a black woman because it's a fucking human and there's no universe in which mm -hmm. i don't have more in common with her then I don't. Of yes. course, there are going to be huge things we don't overlap on. But anyway, I'll get off the soapbox. Yeah, no, it's but all like, good, man. <laughs> getting people to understand Passion. that, that you, you have to tell the story well first. And to tell a story well, you have to invite me inside their humanity. Mm -hmm. And nobody's perfect.